Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm playing Atlantic Chase from GMT Games. This is a 1v1 or solo game of uh, sea warfare and submarines and all that kind of stuff at the beginning and middle of World War II in the Atlantic. And disclaimer that I got a review copy of this one. And if you like the content of the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also listen to our podcast or come join the conversation on our Discord. So like I said, Atlantic Chase can be played 1v1 or solo. For solo, they have a whole bunch of scenarios. I'm playing the second one, the first uh, earliest one that you can play as the British, which is going to be uh, me trying to get my own convoys safely into British ports while attacking German convoys that might pop up. And the main action of the game happens on this big map here, although some uh, scenarios use of these smaller inset maps. And on the map, you're going to be representing your TFs or task forces. They'll either be represented by a bunch of these little wooden pieces connected together. That shows the trajectory of a ship or fleet. And the basic idea of the game, the conceit, is that they could be like anywhere along there. But as these get taken away, you'll have a more triangulated specific idea of where your own ships and where the enemy ships are. But then task forces can also be stations, like this one in northern Britain over there. And these ones, you know exactly where they are. They can be attacked. They can uh, mess with other people's movement. There's a lot going on in the game, so I'll try to explain things as best I can as I go. But the basic idea of the structure is that one player will have the initiative. Uh, right now it's the British, so it's me. And I can take as many actions as I want. There's a bunch of different actions in the game. But many of the actions will give my opponent the chance to get the initiative, or sometimes it will just straight up give them the initiative, and then they can take as many actions as they want until something causes them to not have initiative anymore, and uh, back and forth like that. Until the scenario end is triggered, in this scenario we're trying to complete, get to a safe port, two convoys, uh, both of these long trajectories you see, uh, one coming from... Uh, Halifax and one coming from Africa. Those are my current convoys. The Germans might spawn some convoys as well as things go. And once two of anybody's convoys have completed, have made it safely to a port, the scenario ends. Or when four ships total have been sunk, which that could happen in one giant battle. <laughs> And then at the end of the game, you look at how you did in solo. Each uh, thing you did is going to give you positive or negative victory points. You compare it to a table. You just get a general feel for how successfully you uh, completed things. But when the enemy gets the initiative, you roll a d6. There's a lot of dice rolling in this game. And you cross index based on different factors in play. And it'll tell you different actions to take and give you like all the key details you need. Every once in a while, you'll have to make a choice for them. Uh, but usually, it's pretty obvious which one is best. So uh, that's how things go. And let me give you a quick rundown of kind of how my forces stand. So I've got one task force up here. What is this? I guess like northern Scotland. And you actually keep track of which ships are where over here. By the way, I tried to organize these wooden things. They fall all over the place. I don't know how you keep this game in a nice like orderly fashion. But yeah, this is uh, that task force in the north of Britain. I've got a giant battle cruiser, a regular. No, that, these are regular cruisers and a light cruiser. So pretty, pretty dominant force there. In fact, it's so strong I might split it up into two task forces and divide and conquer. Then I have a second task force with just a single light cruiser that I get to place on my own. And it says I can place it by any British port except for uh, the one of my other things already. So I'm, I'm going to be over here uh, by North America just to back up my first convoy here. And again, here are my two convoy task forces. This one has no lines. This one has a single one. That's how you identify them. In this scenario, convoys can take two hits before they're destroyed. But if a German ship attacks a convoy that's by itself with no defenders, or vice versa, if I get one of their convoys with no defenders, then you capture it automatically. No battle even happens. So I, I want to try to defend them if I can. I also have a few reinforcements I could potentially call in. In Brest, in France, I've got a really pretty powerful uh, French group with a uh, general fleet commander. I forget what these people are, but they have special abilities. In this case, this guy can get rid of an intel token to protect one of my own task forces. But I need to have a successful reinforcement action to get them into play. And then I also have a couple of really powerful but slow battleships hanging out in that same northern Britain spot. Although I don't think I need them yet since I already have such powerful ships there. And the Germans start with nothing, but their actions will very quickly bring some ships into play. Some of them convoys that I might want to attack. Some of them uh, enemies that might attack me. We'll see how it all goes, but let's uh, get into our first action since I have initiative. So we've got a really nice quick reference thing. And there's a nice uh, set of tutorials that takes you through how to play the game. I played through all 10 of them. So <laughs> uh, even though this might seem a little bit overwhelming, there are ways for the game to help you in. To kind of talk through all the actions really quickly, there's uh, the airstrike, which can happen from an aircraft carrier. We're not going to see any of those in this scenario or from an airfield. 
Uh, I have a lot of airfields. The Germans have almost none in 1939 when this scenario takes place, so they won't be doing too many airstrikes. Completion is uh, how you bring a task force into a port. So that's going to be just for our convoys, basically, or damaged ships we want to protect. Engage is how you try to attack a task force once you've found where they are. So they need to be a station, a stationary like located thing to actually attack them. Naval search is how you get them to be a station, basically taking away these trajectory pieces to narrow down their location. We'll get to pass in a second. Reorganize is how you can like move ships and create new task forces. Like if I wanted to split up that giant task force into two smaller ones, I could do that. It's also how I'll reinforce uh, that Brest French fleet or the uh, the other British fleet in. Signals, if you get somebody that has intel on them, which is going to be like if they're going by your ports and they're spotted in different ways, you can lock down their location. So it's kind of like naval search. You can find where people are and get rid of those trajectory pieces. Stealth isn't going to come into this scenario at all, I believe. I didn't see any stealth forces, but you could, like I said, U-boats and things against people. And finally, the most basic action. You can do this as many times as you want. It will never trade initiative, whereas all the recipes have a chance to trade initiative to your opponent. Uh, trajectory just lays down those little pieces. So basically, it's like you setting the course for your ships and where you might want them to go. Now, I mentioned the pass action. You can always take that and it'll automatically give initiative to your opponent. But when you do that, you get to time lapse. And actually, a lot of the other actions I mentioned will have time lapses happen too. When you time lapse, you pick one of your trajectories and you take away a certain number of the trajectory pieces from either end. So, you know, usually you'll do it towards whichever destination you're trying to get to, like in this case, the ports I want to reach. And yeah, the faster or slower the ships, the more pieces get removed. Uh, so you kind of like narrow your path as you reach your destination. And you can only have a convoy land somewhere once the number of pieces that are left for them get to be a certain size. All right, so what do I want to do here? What do I want to do? I could take a reinforce action to try to bring out uh, the French fleet to better protect this convoy. But this convoy is actually pretty close to completing. If I pass once, the uh, convoys are very slow, which means you take away two pieces. So they'd be down to six, which is the minimum number of trajectories that you need to take a completion action and try to have them come to port. So I could pass right now and then potentially bring them to port right afterwards. I could alternatively try to reinforce uh, in those other ships. Like I said, what you do is you roll 2d6. If you get a 7 or higher, so more than 50% of the time, then they reinforce successfully. If not, then you pick any one ship to uh, time lapse, and then initiative passes to your opponent. And hey, you might have just heard the obvious thing that I just thought of. <laughs> if I'm going to pass the time lapse this convoy anyway, I might as well try to reinforce. It can't hurt me. So I'm going to try to bring in the French ships into Brest right here. I already have a ton of ships by Northern Scotland, and nobody's down here to protect uh, this convoy yet. So this is the reorganized action. I could also split up some ships, which does call into question, should I divide up my big British fleet there? I'm going to say no. So let's roll. We're hoping for a seven. Nope. <laughs> So in a failed initiative roll, we pick any one of our TFs to time lapse. I'm going to pick this convoy. It is very slow, so we're removing two trajectories. I'll remove them from here. So now they are six trajectories toward, uh, I guess that's Portsmouth that they're going toward. And then because I failed the reinforcement roll, the initiative automatically changes to the Germans. But every time the initiative changes, before anybody starts taking actions, you do a roll for weather. Right now it's good weather. It's either good or bad. Uh, you roll when it's good weather, only a six will change it to bad weather. So nope. And when it's bad weather, a five or six will change it back to good. So it tends to be good more often than not. Okay, now that it's uh, the Germans' turn with good weather, let's see what they're going to do. I'll roll here and then go to the chart. They rolled a two. And we are currently in the early scenario. It says it'll change to late after there's been a battle or after any convoy has been destroyed or after an airstrike has been used by either side. And right now we have number of successful British completion actions. How many convoys have we brought to dock uh, is zero. So they rolled a two and we got an X. Oh, and there is a modifier of minus one. If a German ship in plays its damage or one was sunk or a convoy was destroyed. Okay. And whichever letter you get, you just check what it says. Here it says decisive action. Select a German TF with a BC in it. There isn't one. So if none in place, select a TF that does not have a convoy in it. If no German TFs qualify, create a new unidentified TF. And we're going to roll for where it is. So this is how this scenario usually goes. They'll uh, add a lot of units and then we kind of got to figure out who they are. And there's an unidentified one which means we're going to check this table once it gets into battle. Until then, it counts as a very slow task force, which is kind of good for us because they can't do as much or get to us as quickly. But uh, yeah, we'll find out if it's a convoy that we can easily destroy. I think that's an armed merchant ship, so that's pretty weak. But the PB is a heavy cruiser. That's pretty tough. And the CA is a regular cruiser, so those could both be a little bit more challenging. All right, so we are rolling for where it's going. Five means that this unidentified TF is going to Narvik. 
And by the way, this is important in this scenario. There's a, I forget what they said. Oh, an international incident zone. Norway is neutral in 1939. So if I do any like airstrikes or engage actions to attack somebody within the one hex adjacent spaces next to Norway, then uh, I can spark an international incident. I got to roll a die. It might make uh, me lose victory points or even give the Germans an airbase in Trondheim, which would be pretty bad. So we don't want that to happen if we can help it. All right, so I don't know what this ship is. And now what it says it's going to do is it's going to try to bring to battle my nearest convoy. And it says it does that while trying to ignore intel triggers. So as I said, you can take the trajectory action as many times as you want. And right now, to bring somebody to battle, they need to get a trajectory that intersects their trajectory. So like they need to get a piece like that in there. And whenever you lay these down, you always start where your actual thing is. You can go in whatever direction you want. You can lay out up to 15 of them. But if you put a trajectory in a space with an enemy air base, with an enemy port, these red dots in this case, or with a station, not a trajectory, but an actual stationary task force where you know where it is, then you'll get one of these intel tokens with that trajectory. It makes it way harder for you to do stuff. Your actions are more likely to fail. Uh, it makes it easier for them to like bring you to battle if they want to. So long story short, the AI is going to avoid putting down trajectories where they'll get intel. Which means uh, since the only way to get to this convoy would be to go through a billion air bases and intel triggers, they're going to try to go to this spot. That's the nearest one that would get them there. And they try to avoid like air bases and stuff too, so I can't airstrike them as easily. So there we go. They've taken that trajectory action. The trajectory action never loses you initiative, so they're still going. And now they want to bring this convoy to battle. So how they do that is the engage action. But to take the engage action, it needs to not be a trajectory. They need to know exactly where it is. It needs to be a station. So to make that happen, first they're going to take the naval search action to try to get rid of my trajectories and shrink me down to knowing that's exactly where my convoy is. So most actions in the game, like the naval search action, follow the same basic format of like how you resolve it. It's a little bit complicated. So first you pick who your active task force is, who's actually doing the action. And they need to be in the same space. So I'm the active uh, task force. Sorry, not me. That's not me. And they are searching for this task force. They're trying to find them. And then both sides can have a supporting task force, a cooperating task force. I think that's what it's called. But they have to be in the same space. So the Germans don't have anybody else here, and I don't have anybody else here. But like if I had, for example, that a little helpful task force I put over in North America, then they could have given me a modifier to the role to make it harder for the Germans to find me. Now, in addition to each side being able to get a helping task force, both sides have the ability to use air support if the weather is good, which it currently is. And the closer the airbase is, the better the modifier. So I'm going to use this airbase that's adjacent. That's the closest I can get. And the next thing you do for pretty much every action is you count the total number of trajectories involved uh, for the target task force. And then for all the active players task forces, whichever one has the highest. So like if he had somebody helping him out and they had like 15 trajectories on the board, that would make it harder to succeed in the action. The more trajectories generally, the worse the action result is going to be for you. So here, there's a lot of trajectories. I can't see if it's going super well for them. We've got 4, 8, 11 for my convoy, and 3, 6, 7. So that adds up to 18. And pretty much all the actions are going to use these things. So 18 is the worst trajectory total for a naval search. There's a decent chance that they will just miss me entirely and find nothing and waste the action. Or they could get one of these. You'll see how those options work in a second. But now they're going to do a 2d6 roll to determine how this actually goes. And we do have a modifier because of my helping airbase. And there's a lot of consistent modifiers, but for air support, uh, they get plus three on the active player side, the German side here, if they're in the hex, plus two if they're next to it, plus one if they're one away. My air base was one away, so I am applying a minus one modifier to the roll. It's less likely it'll succeed. Here we go. We got a eight minus one is a seven. And with a seven and 18 plus, we've got this little icon. So this result means that the trajectory that they're going for is now early or late. They get rid of the one they search for. And then because trajectories can only be a straight line, one uh, set of endpoints, they can get rid of this one or this one. And this is uh, one of those cases where you have to decide for the AI. It says do whatever's best for them. Now, this would be a shorter trajectory, so easier for them to find them. But they would also be able to complete into port almost immediately and also for the germans to follow up they would have to go closer and like get intel in all these airports and stuff so they're going to get rid of these ones and now suddenly i think that it is likely that i will try to go back to north america and maybe this uh, convoy wasn't even going to britain what do you think about that
Now, additionally, in pretty much every action like this, every task force except the one that was targeted has an automatic time lapse because their action kind of pinpoints where they are more. And because this is an unidentified task force, it always counts as very slow. So they're only going to take care of two of their trajectories. And they do uh, take away the ones that are from where they're trying to go, which makes sense because the Otomo is still trying to find this convoy. And then after a naval search, we have what's called an SI or Seize Initiative Opportunity. This is one of the two ways that you can try to get initiative. And in this case, it's a choice. I can either try to roll the dice and get a nine or higher, and I would get the initiative right away. But those who know probability know that's not a great chance. But if I try to get initiative and fail, this little initiative modifier track will tick up one. And the next time I try to get initiative, it'll be plus one. If I fail again, it'll be plus two. So there is a benefit to trying for it, even if I think I won't succeed. The other option, though, is I can choose not to seize the initiative, and then I get an evasive token I can put on any of my task forces. And this uh, can be used to make many actions harder to succeed at. It can also be used as a modifier on a future initiative roll. But evasive tokens are way more effective when the weather is bad because it's kind of hard to see where things are anyway. So if the boat is dodging around, it's hard to find them. In this case, I'm going to try for the unlikely nine plus roll for initiative. And here we go. That's definitely not it. I see a one and a three. OK, so I'm up to plus one, but it is still the Germans action. and They're going to continue trying to bring me to heal. And it's going to be easier for them this time, unfortunately. <laughs> so they're going to do another trajectory action. Remember, you can take as many of those as you want to uh, bring me into a similar hex again. And then they are still trying to search for me. But this time, because my air base is at least two hexes away as the targeted player, it will give me no bonus. So all we have here is them versus me. And both of our trajectories are shorter now, so it's going to be easier. They've got six, and I've got three, six, eight. So they've graduated to the 10 to 15 track, and there's no modifiers, so this could be bad for me. Here we go. Okay, seven. It's seven. Okay, we got lucky. It is another early late. Now, this is bad for them when you get an early late, but taking away the one trajectory leaves you with still two points. Like, they didn't actually get me in the middle. Then I get a free evasive token on the task force that was targeted. So now this convoy has an evasion that I can use later. And once again, I can try to seize the initiative. I'm going to try to. Although well, first I do have to time lapse them. And I should know, by the way, this is an unidentified TF. So this could actually be a convoy itself. And we just think they're trying to attack us, <laughs> which is funny. But yeah, I'll probably send out my big fleet whenever I get initiative to try to figure out who the heck these people are. So we're trying to take initiative again. We've got a plus one modifier. So we need an eight or more. That's not it. Now we have a test two modifier next time. So hey, a bit of rinse and repeat. And actually, I think, yeah, I don't know. Would they... Maybe it'd be smarter for the Automa to go for like a space that's in the middle here so that if they do get like that early late, they can shrink them down. Yeah, so I think that's smarter. That's probably what they should have done last time if I'm trying to be uh, intelligent with them. They're searching for me and I'm trying to escape and I hope they're not actually enemies. And yeah, once again, I'm way too far away. So no modifiers. It's a seven and a six, 13. It's the same chart again. They got an eight this time. And I could have used my evasion, but I didn't. Oh, I should have. <laughs> uh, that would have made it minus one, which would have made it a seven. So instead, we got an eight to nine. So this one means they get to shrink me down to three trajectories. And they, of course, want me to not be able to even get to a port if I can. And they still time lapse. So they haven't quite nailed me down for an attack yet. All right. And I really I'm going to spend my evasive to get plus one of this roll. So I have plus three total. I need a six or higher. I need to get initiative because they're actually about to get me. OK, good. <laughs> so when you get initiative, the modifier ticks back down to zero because now it'll be the Germans building up bonuses. And let's roll for the weather. Still not bad. Wouldn't need a six. And yeah, this ain't good. Um, I've got this guy over here. I've got this much more powerful fleet here. I'd rather send them to help. Uh, because yeah, if this is like actually a tough character, my one light cruiser ain't going to cut it. So I'm going to take a trajectory action myself. And this is an interesting choice. I can just go there, the minimum distance, and then I'll be close enough to have an uh, airplane help me. It would give me plus two since it's adjacent. But I could also go two more to here, have the convoy help me. That would also give me plus two. But that would also force the convoy to time lapse, which would make it easier to find. And if I go here, my trajectory is shorter. See, I think, hmm. Well, let's see. Uh, they've got four and I've got three. That'd be seven. So I'd have to roll a four or five to get the one that penalizes me for being at the end of their trajectory, the little uh, early or late thing. And with a plus two bonus, I'd have to roll a three or a two. So I feel, I feel pretty confident where I am. But actually, my most common results will only shrink them down to three, which would leave them still able to easily get them. Hmm. All right, so whatever. Let's try this. <laughs> here we go. So I'm searching for these guys here. This is the active TF. 
And I have air support from right here for a plus two bonus. So again, seven trajectory total, plus two to the roll. And I do have the leader Forbes with this task force. His ability is after any roll, like in an action or combat or whatever, you can change one of the dice to a six. So I could just like kind of make this happen regardless, but he's only single use for the entire campaign. So, you know, hopefully we'll roll well without him. All right, here we go. Plus two. Ooh, that's pretty good. That makes it an 11, which is yes. So the eyeball means that we made contact, which is going to make it way easier to do stuff with this ship. And the uh, little cylinder means that we will reduce them down to a station in the space where we were searching for them. So it's pretty much the best we could have hoped for. They are now not near my convoy. Get out of here. And he has a little contact token, which gives me a big bonus, especially while they're slow and uh, they're very slow because they're unidentified. So it's going to make it way easier for me to like engage them, for example, if they don't take initiative right here. Oh, and actually, geez, I just realized that uh, I have to time lapse for my people that are actually involved. So we are right in spitting range. Unless they take initiative, this is definitely, pretty much definitely going to combat here. So the Atoma, whenever they have a choice between trying to seize initiative and getting an uh, evasion token, they're going to roll on a one to four. They'll try to seize initiative on a five or six. They'll take an evasion token and they will use it as soon as they possibly can. Like any time it'll give them a bonus. All right, so those guys have evasion. Let's uh, do a different type of action. Well, you know what? First... In case things go poorly, let's go ahead and rebuild the uh, trajectory into a port. They can complete in any port. Oh, they can even complete now. They're at six. So, well, let's, let's do the combat first and try to deal with this guy. So we're now going to take the engage action. Everything you've seen applies exactly the same, like using support and all that kind of stuff. The only difference is the target has to be a station. Uh, whereas you could be a trajectory, it's just going to make it harder for you to bring them to battle. And because they have a contact token, they're going to give me plus two, three, or four to the roll based on their speed. This is unidentified, so it's going to be the highest bonus, a plus four. And because I still have the air support, it's going to be a plus six. And yeah, we're at zero because a, a station counts as zero. So we're at zero plus zero, zero trajectory. Long story short, y'all, you're going to see a battle. Uh, oh my gosh, maybe not. What's two plus six? Eight. Yeah, it's probably still enough. Okay, zero. All right, so we are, do have a battle. If we had not rolled quite so horrifically, we would have had a surprise battle, which would have made it a little bit easier us to fight them. So we go to our little battle board, but first we got to figure out who the heck this guy is. Let's roll for the German table. And it's a two. Which is, ooh, they're toughest, a heavy cruiser. Glad I brought the big boy. And so we're going to get into combat, so let's talk about how the ships work. Uh, these values are the bonus they get to their attack rolls. The uh, right one is for when they're attacking from far extreme range. The left one is for uh, really close and point blank range. Uh, this is how many hits they can take before they flip. And then how many hits they can take again. So in this case, it would take three to destroy them entirely. And the M here is their speed that I've been referencing. This shows that they are torpedo capable, although I don't think they'll be trying to shoot me. They'll probably try to run away. So boop, there's the PB. And I have a few ships. <laughs> oh, and Forbes is there too. Uh, and yeah. They're, I mean, I guess they're not the best fighters in the world. So in good weather, combat will last three rounds. In bad weather, it'll last two. In each round, everybody gets to shoot, and then people can maneuver, and then finally they have a chance to try to run away, which is clearly what the Germans will be doing. Oh, wait, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. I just realized they would have used the evasive uh, maneuver at the earliest possible opportunity, which would have made my battle result become, oh, what even is this, a close... Ah, uh, you know what? It works out the same. That means that if my uh, task force is faster than them, then it still counts as a battle. And task forces are only as fast as their slowest person, but literally everyone here has an F for fast, which is the fastest you can be. So we got them anyway, since again, they counted as very slow uh, when they were unidentified. All right, at the start of battle, unless it's a surprise battle, uh, the people can choose to lay down smoke, which is going to be a minus one modifier to their own attacks and mine. Uh, I think the Automa would clearly choose to lay down smoke here because uh, I have a lot more dice coming at them. And the number of dice you roll is based on range. And you're trying to get a nine or more to actually deal damage on two dice. But it's not two dice necessarily because at extreme range, like we are now where we're each at far, we're going to roll three dice and use the two lower ones. So decent chance we miss here. And all the attacking is simultaneous, and again, unless I had gotten a surprise attack, in which case their attack would happen after I had hurt them if they were still alive. And I'm using the rightmost modifier, so I'm attacking with a 0, 0, 0, 0 four times, and then a plus one bonus for the repulse, and then they'll attack back for a one. All right, so let's go ahead and do their attack. Uh, they'll target, I just looked at the AI preferences, the toughest thing, so they'll actually try to shoot my battle cruiser. Seems a little dumb to me since they can't possibly hurt it that badly. Uh, and they've got a plus one usually, but minus one while they're shooting through smoke will also have a minus one to hit them. So it's an even roll with the two lowest of these three, which is a seven. They need at least a nine to hit. That's a splash result. 
No damage from them. All right. Unlikely it will hit them very much, but let's go ahead and have... Uh, I'll do my four CLs and then end with the BC. So these are all plus zeros, or actually minus ones because of the smoke. So first roll, nine. Oh, oh no, never mind. It's not a nine. It's a four. <laughs> I need to take the lowest dice. So miss. Uh, second is a six. Miss. Uh, third is a three. Definite miss. Or a two with a smoke bonus. And fourth weaker ship is a four minus one, three. Okay, and let's go ahead and roll for the BC, and then I can decide if I want to use Forbes or not. And they got a four, a plus, you know, plus one and minus one, so just a four. So if I change this to a six with Forbes, it would become a nine plus one minus one, and I would deal one damage and flip them, which would basically make it impossible for them to go and bother my friends there. But you know what? They actually have a pretty uh, poor chance of being able to break away. Uh, I have a better chance of keeping them here because I'm faster than them. So I'm not going to use Forbes to change the die to a six yet. I'll just miss. Okay, then we go into the torpedo step. If somebody was in this very close range, they could try to torpedo somebody. That's not going to happen in any of these battles. <laughs> then we can maneuver. So each ship can move up to one. Let's all charge up. Uh, the Germans want to run away, so they will not. And then we get to the breakaway table. So they need to roll a nine plus on 2d6. If my ships are in the near or close zone, though, they get minus one to the roll, which I am. If my ships are faster, which they are, they get another minus one. But then if their ships are in the far zone or nowhere else, they get a plus two. So it's just going to be an unmodified nine with all those added together. Now let's see if they break away. Oh, just barely. They do not. All right, so this might be a little ugly as we go into round two. Uh, the bonuses are still the same. We're still using the right most value. This is not extreme range, but uh, long range. But the big difference now at long range is we just roll two dice and use them. There's none of that three drop the uh, highest one. All right, so we'll do their shot on us first. Still shooting at the battle cruiser. A seven plus one minus one is a miss. Okay, now my four attacks and they're all still minus one. That's a nine. That's a hit. So that's going to flip them. But we'll resolve all that in a second. And second one, miss. Third one, miss. And fourth one, miss. Okay, but that is a damage. And actually, let's go ahead and do the Battle Cruisers attack too. So they are once again even, plus one and minus one, and they miss. So because the ship has just one, one hit is enough to flip it. Now two more will finish it off. You'll see that now it's slow instead of medium. It's got zero at this range instead of one. So they're probably not feeling great about that. And then we maneuver, and heck yeah, man. We are bringing you to ground. Uh, so when you're in close, you can use torpedoes, but only against people that are near, I believe. So again, torpedoes aren't going to matter here. But now if the battle goes another round, we will not only roll two dice, but we will roll with the plus threes and the plus one bonuses here. And if, by the way, they actually moved up there and we were at point blank range, then we would roll three dice and drop the lowest one. So you're really going to hit each other a lot there. Well, let's see if they get away. They need a nine uh, again. <laughs> nope. Now, the battle will end automatically after this round. Again, it was uh, three rounds because of good weather. So let's see if they can hit us. Uh, now they're using plus one, but minus one from the smoke. So it's an unmodified. And they do not get us. Again, they need a nine plus. But let's see if we get them. Uh, so these ones have a plus one now, which will cancel out the smoke. So these three are even. And the Ajax is a minus one. So Ajax minus one. Nope. Uh, these ones an even roll three times. Nope. And a nope. And a nope. And finally, my battle cruiser is a three minus one, so plus two, uh, which is an eight. Dang it, we still didn't hit them anymore. That's okay. At least they're damaged. I think the German ships actually like run away when they're damaged, so they're probably not going to chase my convoy anymore. So that is the end of the battle. We put them all back with their stuff, uh, their damage and things in their task forces. And after a battle, uh, everyone involved gets a contact token, and we both become stations no matter what. Now, in this case, I already all was one, but there we go. And then also after a battle, we have what's called a VI for initiative, V for I. This is the other way besides C's initiative. In this case, we both roll a die. We'll say the red is me. In a tie, I win the initiative, but uh, if I win, again, the modifier is going to go up just like with C's initiative. So I did not win. Okay, they will take initiative from me. Which is unfortunate because I could have done a completion action with either one of my convoys uh, and made them safe, but not to be yet. And let's roll for weather. Oh, it is bad. Okay, that'll change things up quite a bit. That's mostly bad for me because uh, I'm the one with the air forces and I can't use them in bad weather. And then let's roll for their action, which is a five. And because a battle has occurred, we're now using the late table bad weather. Five is a C which is trying to complete one of their own convoys. If no convoy is in play, select a TF with a damaged ship. Oh, we have one of those. Uh, if none, select a TF with the shortest trajectory. Okay, so we're going to get our little damaged uh, heavy cruiser there. 
And select a TF attempts to complete in Keel. That's like their only main port. Uh, if a TF contains an undamaged PB, which it does not. Okay, so they're going to do a trajectory action, the most direct. We'll avoid enemy ports and air bases, but not enemy stations. And then if they can't complete, which uh, they can't complete if their trajectory is bigger than six, or if they have an intel token, which they are going to get, you'll see that in a second, they'll just pass and give me the initiative to try to get away. All right, so let's walk through this a bit. They're trying to get to Keel. So here, we'll just like start from there. And they're trying to avoid any of my air bases or uh, other things. And they're trying to make the trajectory as short as possible. Now, the contact does persist until they actually remove this trajectory, although passing will let them do that very quickly. But now, additionally, because they put a trajectory into space with one of my stations, not my own trajectory, I have intel on them there. And now it said they want to do a completion action to get back to Kiel and lick their wounds. But you can only do a completion if you don't have any intel and it's a six or shorter trajectory. So in both of those cases, they fail and will not get it. So instead, they're just going to pass and time lapse and try to get away from me. And normally for a slow ship, their time lapse would get rid of two tokens. But in bad weather, you roll a D6. It's not actually going to matter. I just want to show you, though. So they would have gotten rid of three because it's less predictable how uh, quickly the ships will move. But in this case, they're trying to get rid of a space with intel. So you check the intel limit. For a slow ship, it's one. That means they can remove one intel only if it's on the end. They always have to take off of the end. But in so doing, they only remove a single trajectory. So they are going to get rid of the contact and the intel. I don't really have much information on where they are anymore, but they are now uh, down only a single trajectory. They did not get to complete because they took a pass action to do that. So it is back to me initiative wise. And let's roll for the weather. Nope, it's still bad. All right, so now I have some options. Hmm. I could try to bring them to ground. I mean, they're just trying to get away. How many victory points am I getting? Ooh, five victory points for each German ship sunk? And only two victory points for each British convoy? Never mind. I'm definitely hunting that dude. I was thinking I could try to do completion actions with either of my convoys and potentially uh, get them in a good place. All right, so I'm going to take my own advice and go here. So if I do get uh, one of those early late things, I can like push them back to here. And yeah, the contact's still there. Although when time lapses for me trying to do this naval search, it will uh, go away in a second. And I sadly cannot use all my awesome air cover right here because we're in bad weather. Now, I could bring another ship in. Like, I could make a giant trajectory all the way to where I'm going to search and have this guy be a coordinating task force. But I have to use the worst, uh, longest trajectory when I do an action like that. So me doing that would make it way less likely to actually do anything. So, yeah, let's just do a basic search on that guy. Uh, three plus six is nine. And no modifiers here. My contact token doesn't like negatively impact me. So it's just a straight up roll. It's an eight. And hey, I could use my leader to make it a 10. Do I want to? What's an eight? Ooh, a 10 would lock them down. An eight would shrink them to three. And then the three would make it very likely to happen anyway. But that would make me give them a second chance. You know what? Yeah, what the heck? Let's go ahead and use Forbes. Say that four was a six. Make it a 10 overall. And now they have a contact token and I've uh, located them again. And then I time lapse, so I will also be there. My contact token is gone. Yeah, come on, dude. You're slow. You can't escape. Now, they can, however, potentially get initiative from me. <laughs> Let's see what they go for. Yep, with a uh, one through four, they're going to try to seize the initiative, needing a nine or higher. No, but they do get a plus one modifier. And now I'm going to engage them. It's, again, pretty much automatic, although I don't have all my lovely bonuses this time. We'll accept the important one. A plus, they're slow now, plus three from contact. So that would be a nine. Which is just going to be a regular battle, not a surprise. Darn it, man. One more. <laughs> surprise battle, I could start them near instead of far. So it's like a billion times harder for them to escape. They can't lay down uh, smoke until their first maneuver. So it's easier for me to hit them. Like lots of good stuff. But man, whatever. We'll try again. All right. So they're clearly laying down smoke. Oh, and it's bad weather. So we only get two rounds now. They're shooting my big boy. Dropping the lowest. Whoa. Holy crud. So it's a 10. Minus one from the smoke is a nine. That's still a hit. Now, a hit does not uh, flip my repulse, but I feel like I might lose victory points for that. That's annoying. <laughs> All right, let's uh, do best to worst this time. So one minus one. So it's just a zero. And I got an eight. Nope. Or no, sorry, a five. All these are minus one of their total. So it's really not very likely. So that's a six. And that's a five. And that's not anything. <laughs> and last one, that's a... Uh, an eight with a minus, no, a seven with a minus one, geez. All right, and we're going to push up, I think. And they're not. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have the BC lay down smoke. It could cover up to two other ships with it. Uh, you can do this when you maneuver. I don't want it to get hit again. But now we're going to see if they just escape, right? So they just still need, yeah, the nine. All right, so we'll get another round to hopefully kill them. Okay, so their attack first. 
and eight minus two, six. No, that's not going to do it. Okay, now me, I have plus one because we're still at long range, but minus one from my own smoke. Oh, and minus one from their smoke. So I have a minus one total. Uh, so that's not going to do it. Okay, and other ones are all minus one still, yeah. Okay, so that's not it. And that's not it. Oh, uh, yep, that's a hit because 10 minus one is nine, the minimum. So they need one more to die. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Ajax got the kill. So we have sunk them. Uh, we will keep this nearby for our victory points later. And that battle is done. Again, I hope the damage doesn't hurt my victory points too much. All right, we get a contact token, but that task force is eliminated because they aren't there anymore. Now we're going to vie for initiative. I'm red, but they have a plus one bonus. Oh, but I keep it. Awesome. So now they got a plus two bonus, but I can still do some stuff. That's great. And yeah, so let's try to bring in one of my convoys. I'm going to go for a completion action. So again, I need to be six or less, not have intel, and have one on a port. All of that applies. And how it works, this actually is not great for me. They have a chance to seize initiative, and if they seize initiative successfully, I don't complete. I just do a time lapse on that task force. But if they fail to seize initiative, or in this case, for the AI's choice, roll a five or six and decide they don't want to, then the completion goes ahead. Hey, they're taking an evasive. Well, they don't actually, they don't have any ships to get an evasive. So, you know, I'm just going to say they automatically try to seize initiative. That's smarter anyway. So they just need a seven or higher with their plus two. Come on. Darn it. Okay. So I do not complete. Oh, actually, I'm going to roll a die because it's still bad weather. Whoa. So this is actually good for me, though. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to complete next time. Or I guess not easier, but I do. Uh, once you remove the last trajectory, that's when you go in. So I am now in Portsmouth with like airplanes and stuff protecting me. It seems unlikely that we we'll get uh, that convoy out of there. And let's roll to see if the weather changes. Nope, it's still bad. Now let's roll to see what the Germans do with their nothing on the board. Three. Okay, late game, bad weather, X. That was this one again. Selected this German TF. Okay, so they're going to make another unidentified. We'll roll for where they are. And they're going to try to bring one of my ships to battle. All right, so they're going to be in Kiel, their main base. So hey, a new friend. And it said they're going to try to bring the nearest convoy while avoiding intel triggers. So I think, I'm not sure which of those takes priority, but it seems like it'd be really dumb <laughs> for them to go one, two, three, two intel tokens which makes it very tough for them to succeed at their actions. Yeah, I think they'd go for uh, this other convoy. Also, if I get the initiative, I can just transfer this convoy into the port and literally cannot be affected by them, so they would have wasted all their efforts. Now, they do have to avoid my planes. They want to avoid this ship too, which is going to make them go a little bit around because that would cause an intel trigger, so that'll all help me out. So here's a big trajectory I ended up with. I do think uh, my own personal uh, strategy of trying to get to like their second one, so you can earlier lay them to there, applies here. Because either way, they'd still be at that 16 plus. Okay, so they're going to do a naval search. I've got no one to help me. They've got no one to help them. So let's see how this goes. That didn't seem good. Four. They miss entirely. And with a miss, if their ship had an intel marker on it, I would get initiative automatically. Without it, I just get a regular C's initiative chance. And what they, I'm not too scared of them. So let's just roll for it and try to get a nine. Oh, he get initiative right away. You suck. I shouldn't forget, though, they do get to time lapse. They are considered very slow because they're unidentified, so they'll just do that. Now let's roll for the weather. Come on, good. Nope. Dang it. I want some airplanes. All right, now what should I do? What should I do? Again, I get way more victory points for destroying people. Uh, but as I thought, for each of my ships that suffered at least one damage, I'm getting minus a victory point. If it's sunk, minus three. Yikes. You know, let's try something a little bit fancy. I'm going to try to bring in reinforcements. <laughs> it might be a terrible idea. I'm going to try it. Remember, I need a seven or 12, so this might be a little bit stupid. God, oh, my God, yes. And I'm bringing in... These big boys. Oh, that's, I have to actually make him a task force, don't I? I'm going to have a bit of fun. Do several trajectory actions. Hello. Hello. How are you? And this is just outside Norwegian waters, so ha ha ha. All right, so this time I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to have, I guess my one with the damage ship still be active because they just get way more shots. I don't want the damage ship to be destroyed. <laughs> um, they're going to search for this person, but with a coordinating task force. And the negative of that is I have to use between like the two of them, whichever has the longer trajectory. But hey, we're all uh, two. We're all friends here. So I'm just going to get a bonus. Now, sadly, in bad weather, the bonus is just one. So man, if I, I could have had this airplane helping, I could have had a plus two instead of a plus one. It would have been great. But yeah, whatever. Okay, so their trajectory is nine plus two is 11. Doing a naval search, by the way, and I get a plus one from my friend. So here we go. That doesn't seem great. So it's a six. Um, which, okay, is early or late. I'm okay with that. At least I can kind of lock them out. Ooh, although now I've pushed them into uh, Norway there. Hmm. I don't really want to cause an international incident. And every ship except the target time lapses, which means that both these will just become uh, stations. 
and my contact is gone then too. All right, so that was uh, lovely. Probably the best I could have expected with how big their trajectory was. Now they get their seize initiative choice. Uh, they're not going to try to seize it. They're just going to take an evasive. Okay. And yeah, uh, I don't want to cause an international incident. There's a decent chance they'll get an airport or two victory points. So first I'm going to transfer this ship into the Portsmouth uh, port box. So it doesn't count as completed yet. I don't get the victory points yet, but it cannot possibly be targeted by the enemy. So it's totally safe. But then for my actual action, I'm going to try to do a completion to get this combo into St. John's. And that means the enemy has to uh, fail to seize initiative. So they do have an evasive, which will give them plus two in bad weather. That part's not great. Oh, but they're, well, they can't get another evasive. So again, I'm going to say that's a wasted roll. <laughs> they're going to spend their evasive. They just need a seven. Why do I keep on making this harder for myself? Gosh, darn it. Okay, they get initiative. My convoy loses five. Okay, they're almost home. So roll for weather. Show me something good. Nope, it's still bad. And the enemy is doing a C. What was that? Oh, completion. Interesting. They're trying to complete their own ship. Uh, okay. Looks to complete in keel. Um, they do a trajectory. They avoid everything. Okay. So, interesting. Oh, wait, wait. I forgot that they should have a minus one modifier if a ship was sunk. So, I rolled a five. They're actually doing an X. So, instead... Oh, my gosh. They're going to try to bring to battle again. Uh, yeah, bro. Uh, go ahead. Bring my convoy to battle. <laughs> Let me see if I even have enough trajectories to do that. Wow, look at that, y'all. Uh, that's 14. The one away from the max. And I'm going to get an intel token right there because uh, there's a port there, there's a uh, plane there, and I have a station there. So, yeah, it's just one intel instead of three, but lots of intel. Okay, and then they're going to try to search for me because I'm not a station yet. So clearly my other uh, task force there will coordinate. That'll be minus one to their role. Uh, the airport doesn't help. And, yeah, it's a 15 length. So actually, they're not in the worst trajectory total. That's pretty hilarious because they're 14. I'm only one. But yeah, so it's just a minus one to their role. Oh, wait. First, I have to show this. Pretty much any time you do an action, at least one of the task forces involved has um, intel. Then you get to roll for interruption. So I roll 2d6. There's no modifiers here. And I look at an eight with one intel is minus two to the roll. So now with my coordination, it's actually minus three to their roll. So it's bad to do stuff when the enemy knows all the stuff that's going. What the fridge? <laughs> wow good roll y'all so it's still minus three so it's a nine so they short me down to th oh wait i'm already three or shorter so all that does is gives me an evasive token kind of like what they do the early or late when they're not in the middle of me so yeah an evasive goes on my uh, task force that's nice and then they time lapse and it's bad weather lose two Oh, and crud, you know, I've been playing wrong. Sorry, you already saw this note, but I just realized that they actually roll for a new action on the action table each time they retain initiative. So they wouldn't necessarily like keep on trying to search. They might do other things instead. So sorry about that. Uh, let's try to get initiative here. They already have an evasive token. I could use it right now to make this a seven for initiative, but they've like barely accomplished anything. <laughs> so yeah, let's keep the evasive for now and just roll. Well, whatever. I'll spend the evasive two because it's bad weather. Give me plus two. So I need a seven. Hey, there we go. I got initiative. And please weather. Please. Gosh darn it. All right, let's forget about my convoys for a second. And guess whose turn it is again? It's the death force. Uh, they're both coming in here to coordinate with each other. We still don't have airplanes to help. I hate it. I hate it. And then once again, my bigger task force will try to search with the smaller one uh, aiding them. So it's going to be a 14 total, a uh, basic plus one. Their intel doesn't affect this, by the way. It's only the active player. So plus one for my coordination, 14 trajectory. It's a seven. Okay, so I will create early or late again. I'm taking away their intel, but I think it's worth it because now they're going to be just a single little place over there. And yeah, sometimes the theme's a little weird. How are they like searching for my ship when they actually were over here uh, by Iceland? Nobody knows. And I'll see if they want to get initiative. They do want to try for it. That was a one, sorry. And oh no, they got it. Darn it. All right, roll for weather. No, roll for their action with a minus one modifier, a three. And I should have said I had a time lapse, so I can do something fun this time, I just realized. Boom. Let's block them up completely <laughs> so they really can't go through there without taking intel. All right, what did I say they got? Was it a three or was it a two? I don't remember. Was it a four that I modified to it? Okay, I'm just gonna roll again. Mike's getting old and forgetful. Okay, a four minus one is a three. I feel like it's what they got last time. Which in Bather will be another X. That's what they're trying to get my convoy, right? All right, so can they... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, they can get there. It'll take them a while. Yeah, once again, it's the longest trajectory possible. <laughs> once again, they get an intel for all the crud there. Oh, they did manage to get around everything else. 
All right, let's roll for interruption because they have an intel. That doesn't seem like it's going to do anything. Nope, minus zero. So they just have a minus one for my coordination. Oh, that's a much better roll for me. Four on a 15 uh, naval search. Oh, okay. So what does that do if there's only one thing there? Does it turn them into a station? Let me check that. Yeah, it's checked, and indeed it does. This is now a station, and I get an evasive maneuvers marker since they didn't actually earlier late me. And they get to roll for how much they lose. Whoa, five. That's actually a lot, and they got away from me. All right, now I can try to seize the initiative, and yeah, let's use the evasive. I don't want them to actually get a chance to attack me. Uh, oh, didn't need it. I uh, got the initiative. Come on, weather. Yes, it's good weather again. Let's go, air power of reign supreme. <laughs> and... Uh, oh, I don't have to roll for myself. This is my turn. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer them to St. John's. So now they can't get attacked. So all my convoys are safe. And maybe I should just try to complete them now, right? Because if I do anything else, it's going to give them a bonus to seizing initiative. So I should just make it happen. But here, in case such efforts fail when I try to complete and fail, I have to uh, do a time lapse. Although it's on the ship. So never mind, this isn't really going to make a difference. But sure, what the heck? I'm going to go ahead and say hello. And <laughs> come in here with both my ships. Actually, you know what the hey? I've got so much like awesome bonuses over here. Let's just bring in the big dogs. Or no, not them. I want the fast one. <laughs> so pretend those are all. I'll switch them out. The uh, the one that has a damage ship in it. There we go. Magic of editing. Okay, but now, yeah, I want to try to complete first. Uh, let's complete. Oh, well, that's right. If I complete both my convoys, the game ends. So let's try to complete one. So are they going to try to seize initiative? They are. They need a nine plus. They did not get it. So cool. They get a plus one. But one of my two combos, I'll say the one in Portsmouth, has uh, completed and got me a victory points. All right, now with that, I'm going to do a different action. This is a fun one you can do when you have intel. It's called signals. And how it works is that is automatically, wherever they have intel, turn them into a station without any search needed. I already knew where they were. And then I automatically get to pick one task force in their hex and time lapse it. So now my fighters over here are much closer. That's because they're up fast and it's good weather again. Now they get to seize the initiative, but if not, I have a very good chance of engaging them here. Of course, they have a pretty decent chance of seizing the initiative. Nope, even with their plus one, now it's plus two. Let's try to engage. All right, now this, this is going to be pretty. Okay, so the one that's being engaged is them. The active TF is my one with four fighters. The coordinator is my little light cruiser. And I'm launching from the same space. So, because we have good weather again. Plus three from the airplane. Plus two from the coordination. Uh, so, I've got six trajectory. That counts as a zero with a plus five bonus. This is awesome. All right, here we go. Engage. Uh, so that eight goes to 13 on a, what was it? Six trajectory. So I get to battle. Um, I mean, I would have battled anyway because they're very slow. I didn't get a surprise. If uh, my trajectory had been a little bit shorter, I would have gotten that. I'll see who we got this time. Five. Oh, I think it's a convoy. Yes, yes, yes. Which is not even fight a battle. We just immediately captured. What were y'all doing going to North America? Where are you? <laughs> Did they like get their charts wrong? There we go. Oh, man. So I destroyed one of their ships. I captured a convoy. I landed one of my own convoys. God, I feel like this is a pretty good result. Does the thing end now? I think it does. The scenario ends when two convoys have completed. No, I only have one. It also ends when four ships are sunk. A destroyed convoy counts. So, no. Um, we have two ships sunk and one convoy completed. So we keep going. Now they're vying for initiative with plus two. I'm red. Yeah, of course they're going to get it. And weather... Okay, good. Does not change from good. And they're rolling a three for their action with the minus one. It's actually a three this time. Uh, it's another... Oh, they're trying to hunt me down again. Are y'all serious? This is not working out well for you. So they're going to make a new thing in there and then... Oh, no, I don't have any convoys. Um, if no convoy is in play, tree is an E instead. And yeah, E is ending the scenario. If the weather is good and there's no British convoy in play, the scenario ends. Okay, there we go. I was about to say, there isn't very much for them to do. So we've got uh, one British convoy complete. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. I mean, I have a convoy in the port, but yeah, everything else says I try to bring it to battle. So I think I've kind of made the convoy not in play in a way. So we'll say we only have one British convoy completed, two. Um, one German ship sunk, so seven. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, geez. Does a convoy count too? So 12 minus one for one damaged ship. Um, or is it even damage? Oh, it says no hits. So we definitely have hits. So Britannia Triumphant, the first lord of the Admiralty, Winston Churchill is ecstatic. Yurt is the prime minister to authorize the mining of Norway's inner leads. Now, again, <laughs> we should not have been having them just repeatedly try to hunt me down a billion times uh, in those first rounds. We should have been rolling again and again. They probably would have had more ships on the board. And this would have been a more varied and exciting playthrough. So sorry about that error. But still, you got to see most of the actions in the game, except for the stealth action. And uh, yeah, that is Atlantic Chase. Hope you all enjoyed it. Hope that was helpful. 
And at the end of the playthroughs, I'd like to thank our highest tier patrons. Most patrons get exclusive videos every month, but these ones get their names read. So thank you to Dan Kierstead, J. Willie MF, Nick Skeen, and Joshua Thomas, our co-op champions. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.